Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Yes, these are big fly reels, but these are salmon fly reels. They used predominantly years ago, probably 60 to 80 to 100 years ago or longer, for the Atlantic salmon, a much sought after species of salmon. And written about, if you do want to learn about it, the Atlantic salmon, by somebody who was an absolute expert, especially with small rods as well, Lee Wolf on the Atlantic Salmon, you won't get a better book than that if you do want to learn about Atlantics. However, while this species I consider to be quite hard and quite difficult to catch, if you go to somewhere like British Columbia, West Coast of Canada, you can catch no less than five species of salmon. Probably more, they might have even invented a few more by now. But one of the best ones you can get, sockeye salmon, and do you know what? You can catch them on virtually anything, light spinning gear, small multipliers, or fly rods. Not fly rods as big as this, but still salmon fishing. Let's get over there, fantastic scenery. This is one from the vintage series, so forgive if there's any hiccups in it, it's the best we can put together. But I'll tell you what, it shows you what type of fishing we were getting. Dare I say it, 20 plus years ago, maybe 25 years ago. I wish I was that young then, there's a lot more fish in. Let's get over there, see what we can find out. I've heard a tip off that up the Harrison River, which is one of the clear glacial runoff rivers. Um, it's about 10 miles upstream. Um, it's really, really good fishing for sockeye salmon. Now we've yet to see those. I've only ever caught a few of them before. Apparently the main migration uh, for one of the creeks has barreled up there through the last few nights and they are so thick, it's unbelievable fishing. Let's check it out. Ed, we're here on the outside of Weaver Creek, I understand, on the Harrison River, and I can tell by the number of anglers around here, absolutely phenomenal fishing. I want to get started, just give me some information, basically what's happening here. I'm here on the uh, Harrison River today. Uh, it's quite busy out here for a, a weekend day on a Sunday. Uh, quite often this river has uh, got very few anglers on it. We're fishing for sockeye salmon. Uh, these salmon are heading up this river system and into the Weaver Creek spawning area. And uh, out here with uh, bait fishing gear, this uh, gear is uh, kind of a heavy gear that we use for these salmon. Uh, lots of people like to fish with spinning gear and of course you'll see a lot of fly fishermen up and down the river. Now, these sockeye will be spawning in uh, just a few weeks and there are several thousand of them. How long do they uh, hold up in here, Ed, before they actually move on up the river? You know, do they sit, or these fish we see moving on the surface, are they running through all the time? Actually, they're moving uh, right now, but they're pretty stationary, even though they're moving around in groups and schools. Um, they're waiting for a rain, Graham. As soon as we get a good rain, these fish will move right up into the system and spawn. And is the uh, fish way back on the Fraser waiting to come up here as well, or is this a main batch here, you figure? This is a main batch here. There's good to be some more that are going to come as well, but for the sockeye, this is the main batch that are going into the Weaver Creek run. And you get any other species, Ed? You know, do you get the chums and springs come up here, or is this...? Just a few minutes ago, uh, my fella just right up here from me caught a nice big chum salmon, so we're catching a few chums. And this, the cohos and, of course, the big kings or spring salmon will be coming coming through here uh, just in a few days and weeks as well. Uh, this is a pretty good fishery. It has a lot of different species. We have uh, some coarse fish in here, some squaw fish. We also have some uh, 
big fish, uh, some sturgeon in this river, and there's also uh, a lot of cutthroat trout in this river. Oh so. really? What sort of size do they run, eh? Because I haven't caught one yet. Well, they only run about 11, 12 inches about is the average, but you can get them up to six pounds. If you get a six pounder, that fish is probably a sea run cutthroat that's been to the ocean and back. That's a big fish, six pounds. Now, it sure is. Can you take that sort of thing on a fly rod, or are you going to catch one on the same sort of gear we're using today? You can catch them on this kind of gear, but it's much more fun on a fly rod, and a fly rod is uh, my choice of uh, weapon when I go for those cutthroats. Okie dokie. Okay. Good talking with you, Graham. Can you just show us how you fill it them up? We pull their gill right out so that it bleeds the fish well. And uh, what we do is we uh, we cut the fish right up the center, just like that. It has beautiful eggs in it. Is that the eggs that uh, you can use for bait that I see when they do the float fishing head? Yes, sir. That's uh, sockeye salmon eggs, and of course we use it for sturgeon fishing as well. And you uh, cure that? They put, is this where they put borax and stuff? Yes, sir. We put borax and procure on them, and uh, we make a little cut right up in there which is able to pull the whole gill plate and everything right straight out of the face. Do it in one movement. Just do it one right, one shot right there. And then I come in and just with the knife take that right out right there. And same thing on this other side. And then it pulls the whole system right out of the fish. There's a membrane right in there that you pull back. That's an air sac. Uh, we always throw that back in the river because there's a... Uh, it breaks down, yeah? yeah? It all breaks down and that adds to the... And you're splitting out there where it's just like the, the backbone? Uh, yeah, that's gunk. that's the kidney right there that's laying in there like that. We take that kidney right out of there because it's full of blood. Blood's one of the first things that disintegrates on a fish. Yeah. Nice red meat on these. They're beautiful fish. And, uh, of course, if you like smoked fish, you can't beat a sockeye salmon because they're just full of oils and, and beautiful, and beautiful they, meat. They tell me these are about the most uh, popular commercially taken fish, is that right? That's right. This is the highest commodity on the market. rig I've been getting all the success on. Nice little star drag bait casting reel, salmon rod. And basically the lead is just fixed there, hanging on a piece of valve rubber tube, stopped by a swivel, and about five feet of 10 pound mono, and a piece of wool, can you believe, and a little thing called a corky, which just slides down on the top. But as you can see, when the wool is wet, it actually does look like a little fish swimming along and that looks like the head of a little fish. And you can change all different colours, but the two, one, two best colours today, I've uh, been watching what everybody else has been catching, chartreuse and green. So being from Britain, I thought, I've got green here, I've got chartreuse there, I can't fail. So how's it going then, Keith? Well, quite well, really. Uh, I'm not doing an awful lot, to be quite candid, but uh, then again, I'm not snagging anything at the moment. You get a few take legitimate, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it's nice to get it properly hooked. What sort of fly you got there, God only knows. It's a yellow and green thing. I wouldn't fish with it in England, uh, unless I, were, I was absolutely pushed. But uh, it's certainly oh, one, at least. I've got to get back, Andy, because in the way. <laughs> so you've uh, you've caught enough on the normal method. I was mentioning earlier on. There's actually piles of fish coming out. Absolutely. It's nice to be able to change over to the fly tackle. Absolutely. Yeah, they stacked up. That the, thing, the things, the fish that you can see, I'm pretty sure, are just the top end of a, a great pile of fish. Thousands, um, thousands in there, I, I guess. Would say thousands, yeah, if not millions. <laughs>
bit of an exaggeration to say millions, but they certainly are stacked up. Yeah, I just saw that uh, plane that went over, apparently it's a fisheries plane as well, yeah. so... I don't know if he's counting anglers, there's that many areas he's counting fish. <laughs> yeah, Bill Pitt certainly might be doing that. There's so many fish, it's, in, it's absolutely incredible. <laughs> got some underwater shots of that. So being a good friend of Keith, he invited me over and asked me to fish his superb spot with him. He was actually getting good takes on the fly and what I did, didn't have any flies, I left them in the boat, broke one off. I put the same rig on we were using with a little corky, it's buoyant, it's very very shallow here where Keith found these fish. Had three fish in four, a dozen or so casts. Have we got another one on now? want to come. <laughs> come here. Female sockeye. And it falls off the barbless hook there. Hello. <laughs> woo, woo, woo. It's gone. <laughs> Let's catch one of those again. Thanks, Keith. A jumper. That's a nice fish too. What was that? Far stripping, Keith? Yeah, it's stripping. Yeah, not very far under, as near the top as I could make it. But it's a heavy line, and I could do actually with a floating fly. So it pulls it down, and we can fish it a bit slower. You think that's snagging bottom, that fly, Keith? Occasionally, it just it just catches the weed, which I don't like very much, but. Uh, Beggars can't be choosers, that's all we've got at the moment. Well, I know. think it's a doe. <laughs> can't put any pressure on this really at all. You've got to put it on the spool. Well, are these rods, Keith, uh, pretty light ones, are they? Oh, or beautiful rods. Six, six weight, something like that, seven oh, weight? I think they're bigger than that. This will throw a nine quite comfortably. But short though, isn't it? I mean, well, yeah, eight, six, no nine foot? Rod. It's a nine foot one. I think, but it's the beautiful rod. Here she comes. And Keith might come on top. Keith. Another beautiful BC salmon. Here we go, another fantastic sockeye from down here on the Harrison. Where you go? Brilliant 
British Columbia is undoubtedly the place to come if you want to catch your first salmon. It may also be the place to come if you want to catch your biggest salmon. Me? I'm sorry. I'm off fishing. I've got a few hours before the plane leaves.